I bring you greetings of joy in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is another wonderful day that our lovely Father in heaven has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. It doesn't matter the devices and strategies of powers and agents of darkness against any child of God. The Bible says, Who is he that will speak and it comes to be when the Lord has not commanded it? Child of God out there listening to me, I want to encourage you to keep on believing God, holding on to his words of promises. For he that promises is faithful, and that which he has promised, he is able, and he will indeed perform and perfect in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's episode of the Regenerational Radio Broadcast, I'll be bringing our way part number three of the Syria teaching. I started in this program some weeks ago on the topic, The Mysteries of Max. And I'd like you to go with me straight to the Bible. A Bible reading is from first, the book of Prophet Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse number 4 to verse number 6, and then the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse number 7. First, let's read Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4 to verse number 6. I read. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both mates and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is a mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which we are before the house. Then finally, Exodus chapter 12, verse 7, it says, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Again, I cover all my listeners and the environment with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, let me please you to circumcise our ears and hearts that we may receive your word unto healing in the name of Jesus Christ. One more time we ask, may it please you to frustrate every hand and every device of the wicked to bring violence and bloodshed in the land. Give us peace and let your will be done in our land and in everything about the land. For you are the one that chooses and that brings to the throne and that removes from the throne. Let your will be done to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. As I said, I will be delivering part number three of the teachings on the topic, the mysteries of Max. Some weeks ago, when I delivered part two of this teaching, I explained, among other things to us, that Max simply referred to signs, tokens, drawings, or writings on a thing, person, or place that indicates ownership, destination, status, or quality of such a thing. It's the symbol that distinguishes a thing and defines a thing. And that Max can be physical. I made references to some portions of the scripture of physical Max, Leviticus 19.28, Galatians 6.17, Revelation 13.6. Max also on a body or a house can be spiritual, that is physically unseen. Like marks of sin, as seen in Jeremiah 2.22. 
I also explained to us that in the spirit realm, marks and the clothes a person wears will determine how you are treated or related with or rated. Marks also signify ownership, covenant associated with you, level of protection you should enjoy, and so on and so forth. And around it of that part number two, explaining to us how you can be delivered from satanic marks. Because there are satanic marks on the bodies of people. There are also satanic marks on the bloodline of people. The physical correlation of satanic marks on bloodlines that I can use to explain it is DNA, which physical eyes do not see, but it determines how a person will behave or the characteristics of the fellow physically. Now, in the spirit realm, there are marks on bloodlines of certain individuals and families that you will trace certain reoccurring evil associated with anybody from that family. That week, when I handled part number two of this teaching, I explained how you can terminate such wicked marks of your life, of your business, of your family. Now, I want to say this. Marks are given to people or places not only to indicate ownership, status, but also to confirm the purposes in the heart of the giver of such marks. Like some marks are given for protection, as seen in Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4, where God said, Mark the people that cry over the abomination in the land, so that they will be protected from the coming destruction. In Exodus chapter 12, verse number 7, God told Moses, Let the children of Israel strike the doorposts and lintels of their houses with the blood of the lamb they will kill in the Passover evening. That the blood will become a mark on their houses. And when the angel of death will pass through the land of Egypt, he will not enter into such houses. Here we see the marks we are given for purposes of protection. Marks also can be given for purposes of warning. Keep away from this place. Keep away from this thing. Like Cain, when God pronounced punishment on him in Genesis chapter 4, Cain protested and said, this is too much for me. And God said, I'm going to put a mark on you so that people will not kill you. And anyone that does that, judgment and vengeance will be taken upon that fellow. Now, I want to say this. Max, whether spiritual max or physical max are given by three principal beings. Max are given by three different persons. These persons are number one, God. Number two, Satan. Number three, man. Let me quickly start with the marks of Satan. Every mark that is given by the inspiration and instigation of Satan, by agents of Satan, they are unto destruction. Even when some parents carry their children in the name of of deliverance to satanic native doctors, mommy water spirit agents that let their daughters be cured of mommy spirit or banjo, and the satanic native doctor tears a part of their body, either the hand or the face or their forehead, and gives a mark. They will tell you that that's a mark of 
getting such demons out of that child. But the truth about it is that as they tear that body, they insert invisible signs, properties, that will keep that person perpetually in bondage to such satanic powers that they are, are claiming to be delivering the fellow from. And for the rest of the life of that fellow, that person remains in bondage. Except when the person undergoes re-deliverance. I don't mean the deliverance. Some so-called preachers will tell you, buy yam, buy rice, buy goat, bring this money. As a matter of fact, any preacher that places a demand on you for money before praying for you should be avoided. That is not scriptural. The person is making merchandise of you. So, marks from Satan are unto evil. You know, Jesus said in St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10, that the thief come in not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So, any mark from Satan, visible or invisible, are unto destruction. The second pose of marks that are given by Satan and his agents are to turn such people away from God and still at the end it will lead to destruction like in Revelation chapter 13 verse number 16 to verse number 17 the mark of the beast is to confirm certain people as having been lost forever in hell even today some people in the name or in their quest to get wealth, attend political offices, become prominent, get themselves involved with satanic groups, cultic groups. They receive some visible, some invisible marks upon their bodies that will identify them as belonging to this cult or this group. Now, at the physical level, it will appear that such cultic group will help that fellow to become rich, attend certain offices, realize certain desires. But the truth about it is that at the end of the day, it will lead to destruction. For there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is a part of destruction. So any mark from Satan will ultimately lead to evil. Second giver of max, man. Man gives max to fellow human beings or properties for both good and evil. Notice, the one of Satan is unto evil, but the one of man is for both good and evil. In the days of the Roman Empire, as the ruling empire of the then known world, they will normally put marks on the hands of their soldiers. Roman soldiers bear marks on their hands, while their slaves will receive marks on their foreheads. I want to use this as an illustration to teach on the dual purposes of marks given by man. Now, in the case of these Roman soldiers, it's for purposes of identification. But in the case of the slaves of Roman citizens, the mask given to them is to identify them as slaves for continual slavery. Man can give marks to fellow man to say, this person is my servant. Like during the period of slave trade, they had different shapes and sizes of hot irons with which they give marks to the slaves. The round one may indicate that these slaves become to Mr. Brown. The square iron will give square shaped mark on the slave to indicate that this slave becomes to Mr. White Foolish, and so on and so forth. In that case, the marks are given for evil purposes. On the other hand, in the ancient times, 
even in modern times, you see families that will give marks on the bodies of their children or members of their community. So that wherever they are seen with such marks, they will identify them as coming from a particular locality. Even in our, our country, Nigeria, there are marks you will see on the face of some Nigerians and you will be able to say, this person is of Yoruba nation or this person is from this part of northern Nigeria or the other part. Such marks are not unto evil, but unto good. Thirdly, marks are given by God. And when God gives marks, He gives them for good purposes or reasons. For there is no evil with God. Even in the midst of marks for judgments, it is to establish the righteous standards of God. So, God gives marks. Number one, to the wicked, to mark them for judgment. Number two, to descend to children of God, to mark them for protection and preservation from evil. E.g. Exodus 12, 7, Ezekiel 9, 4 to 6, Revelation chapter 7, verse 3. Again, God can give marks in answer to prayers, like in the case of Cain in Genesis chapter 4. Whereby that mark was a warning unto people to keep away from Cain. I will also want you to take note of this. The marks of God upon people are determined, number one, according to God's redemptive purpose in that life, and number two, according to the activities of that fellow and how that fellow relates with the word of God your response to the word of God in the case of marks of judgment people receive marks of judgment according to their activities here on planet earth how they responded to the word of God and the life they live but in the case of prayers God gives such marks in answer to prayers but in the case of certain greatness God can give that mark while the fellow was still in the womb. Like he spoke to Jeremiah. While you were in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you a prophet to the nation. In the case of Abraham, Abraham received his own mark of greatness, not while in the womb, but as an adult and as he responded to the word of God. And I want you to know this. When Satan gives you a mark unto evil or uses his satanic native doctors to introduce marks of poverty, sudden death, and different evils in your family, you can terminate such wicked marks by the blood of Jesus Christ. When in your father's house, there are marks of certain evils that are on there. Listen to me. Such wicked marks can be stopped. When man gives you marks of evil, such wicked marks can be stopped. Also, when man gives you marks of greatness or clothing of greatness, such marks and clothing of greatness can also be taken away from you. When Jacob clothed Joseph with a goodly garment, his brothers took it from him. When Potiphar clothed him with a goodly garment, Potiphar's wife took it from him. But when Pharaoh, a king, clothed him with a goodly garment, nobody took it from him. What am I saying? When God gives you marks of greatness, no man can take it from you. The Bible says in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 37. Who is he that said, and it come to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? My dear listener, I want you to know this. If God has not commanded poverty and afflictions for your family, for your life, 
then you have the right in the spirit realm to refuse and to resist and to rebuke and to reject the spirit of poverty, the spirit of afflictions. If God has not commanded sudden death, terminal diseases in your life, you have the right to reject it. My dear listener, you must not submit your life to satanic marks in your family bloodline. You must not submit your life and accept satanic marks upon your business or your family that has placed a limitation in your life. By the blood of the Lamb of God, you can overcome the dragon and his angels. And not only it, by the blood of the Lamb of God, every mark of the enemy written on your children, on your life, on your marriage, on your business, can be wiped away. The Bible says, in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made the sure of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That is to say, in Christ Jesus, you can say no to both visible and invisible satanic marks that have been imposed upon your business, your life, and your affairs. And not only it, you can also insist that that which God has ordained for you in life, you must possess and you must excel by the same. And this is going to be possible, very real in your life. If you have given your life to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. I speak to some young people out there listening to me. You want to excel in life and be greater than your parents and every other person that your family has been associated with. That is possible. Not just through Yahoo Yahoo life. Not by submitting yourself to one secret society or the other. But by receiving Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. And you live your life according to the word of God. God is able to make a means meet, roll away every evil mark that have been associated with people in your family. Roll them away from your life and give you grace to attain the greatness He has ordained for you. But I plead with you this moment, why don't you receive Jesus Christ into your life as your personal Lord and Savior? Bible says, For this reason was the Son of God made manifest, that He might destroy the works of the devil. Come on, receive Jesus into your life, and allow Him to take care of those works of the devil and agents of darkness that have been frustrating people in your family or that have been visiting you with reoccurring afflictions. Allow Jesus to take over and you will see that He will bring into your life His own mark of greatness and glory. I want to pray for you. If you want to receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I come unto you just as I am. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. And I receive Jesus into my heart. And I confess that He is my Lord and my Savior. And I am saved by faith. In Jesus' name, Amen. 
Father, I pray for all that listen to me. And I ask that your mercies might overtake all that come to you now through faith in Christ Jesus. Let their sins be washed away. Let the power to be your children be given to them in the name of Jesus. I bind every power of darkness, enforcing satanic marks and the consequences in the life of any of my listeners. I command such hands of darkness away from their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, by your finger, bring these ones to the place of your glory and peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Till the same time next week, this is your brother Bishop Maxwell C. Correa saying, God bless you. It's gonna be alright, it's Christ.